Right, ladies and gentlemen, this, it's time for change, and we need change. Things have to improve. Okay, it's a problem all around the world at the moment, because people do not understand economics and tax the way it should operate. We started with a community of people. We then had an industrial revolution. And this created the business sector. There are only three segments to the economy. That is, a community of people, a government, and a business sector. That is it. The community will work for the government, and the community will work for the business sector. There is nowhere else to work. The government provides services and the infrastructure. The business sector provides the goods and services that are required by the community themselves, the government, and exports. Which is the important segment? Do we know the community without which the other two segments do not exist? The government and the business sector are there to provide for the needs and wants of the community. The first responsibility of government should be to ensure that the community is provided for in all respects and the community must work towards this object as well. We have to compete in a global economy. And we are going to see how we can reduce business costs by 20 to 30 percent. Reduce the cost of government by another 20 to 30 percent. We can improve turnover to businesses and tax receipts to government and obtain investment funds. What more do you need? An overall basis, <coughs> the business, what does the business sector actually produce? What are the end products of business? Few realize that the end product of the business sector and the, is the provision of goods and services to consumers. Only consumers have the money to support business and they are the reason that the businesses exist. There is no one else buying products. Business sector includes all businesses involved in the conversion of basic raw materials, earth, sea and air, into finished products. It includes all servicing and distribution business organizations and includes financing organizations as well. People must work. From the beginning it has always been that people must work and contribute to the community. Karl Marx said, he who does not contribute shall not take. Governments have a responsibility to ensure that people work for a living. Purchasing power versus GDP. GDP reflects the amount of production by the business sector which should at least increase with population growth and can be increased with technology. It is the consumer spending power that will dictate the strength of the economy. Business production may well stand still if consumer spending stops or shrinks. Why is it that China can have a GDP growth of 6 to 10 percent while the EU drops? Cheap labor. 
Many businesses move to China because their labor is cheap and their workers work. They fail to realize they needed the spending power in other countries to really be successful. There's a conflict of interest. Technology improves production methods and production, but it often reduces the number of people in employment. Taken to extreme, who is going to buy and how do we cope with rising unemployment and the need to maintain spending power? The conflict of interest arises, the businessman will consider his cost and will fail to appreciate the bigger picture where his workers are a part of the consumer base. What taxes do we pay as individuals? PAYE, NASA. Rates. Rates. PAYE, NEC, the social services, rates, taxes, the VAT. We pay a lot of tax from our income. And we've lost a piece. Where do we get our income? We get it. That's different. Than no, it's all right. We get our income from our employers. It's time to change. The income tax system has been for 200 to 300 years old. By calling the tax income tax and relating it to employee income, emphasizes that the tax is paid by the employee. It is shown as a deduction from his income. However, that assumption is wrong and things can be changed. The employer and the employee contribute equally. Often there are deductions on this basis. Again, totally wrong. The employer pays it all. The deduction from the employee is part of the system that makes one believe that he is paying, he is not. Where do we get the money to pay all of these taxes? Yes? Having established that the taxes we pay are in fact provided by the employer, what other taxes are there? Taxes raised by government against the business sector, because there is only the business sector sector left. And companies pay income tax, rates, licenses, social service contributions, NEC, women's compensation, tolls, customs, you name it, they pay it. In addition, they pay the taxes that the employee pays in the price of the uh, cost of the employment. And there are taxes in the cost of most products that they use. The business sector absorbs all of the taxes. Taxation. Almost all taxes are included in the price of goods and services to consumer and the main taxpayer is in fact the consumer. Nothing can change this. Whatever else happens, nothing can change it. A big problem. The robots do not pay tax and do not consume goods and services. However, the robots could pay check, uh, tax through a VAT system. Now we look at how economics, economies can be made far more efficient. A book by Peter William Bailey, what's all in the price? That explains a lot of these things. Right, business costs, we have employer's income, his contributions to whatever. And then we have gross pay, income tax is taken off, NASA and other deductions are taken off, 
and his net pay in the end 700 against a total of $1,100. There's a huge difference. In the company costs, you will find the pay at $1,100, production costs, overhead costs, other taxes, profit after tax, the tax on the profit, the total cost, VAT, and there's your selling price, 4232. We'll see that again. If we change and the employer now pays the taxes, the net pay of 700 is still the same. But that's what we pay now to the workers. The same net pay. The government is picking up, or the employer is picking up, the other taxes, all the taxes. And it makes no difference to his costs or the employee. Nothing else changes. The price is the same. We've left everything else the same. And why do we give a tax allowance to a business for a machine which will replace workers in the knowledge that spending power in the marketplace will be reduced by those workers' incomes and the tax revenue to government will decrease while the cost of unemployment benefits will increase. But we do give capital allowances. We can change all this. Now we have all the, uh, the taxes all in one place. We can reallocate the taxes. Bear in mind that all taxes add to costs except for VAT. Right. We've revised the company costs. Gross pay is now the net pay, 700. Production costs, overhead costs, the taxes have gone. Profit tax has gone. And the selling price has come down. And we can put all these taxes now into VAT. And the price does not change. Is still 4232. Two. But we have moved all the check, uh, taxes and our cost of production has gone down. There are more cost savings in this. I've noticed that production costs usually include the manufacture of articles by other companies, and in there you have other taxes. Everything starts with raw materials emanating from ground, sea or air and converted by manpower and energy into something. So there is a lot more manpower and tax in the productive process than shown in my example. What difference does all this make? The cost of production has gone down. The employee remuneration is the same but the cost of employment has gone down. The end price is the same. The return to the investor is the same, but the profit is less. The hidden taxes are now exposed as VAT. It shows that locally produced goods and services carry more sex, uh, taxes than imported equivalents. And that's as things stand. It reveals that we do not pay our taxes as PAYE, but that we pay all of our taxes when we buy our goods and services. It's all in the price. It reveals that the consumer is the major taxpayer, and while companies pay most of the taxes, the cost is passed on to the consumers. It shows that the lower paid workers, because of their greater numbers, will pay the taxes of the rich. This is on the assumption that the total spending power of the majority is greater than the spending power of the minority rich. The arrangement best suits the free market system because production is more competitive 
There should not be any hidden taxes. On the present basis, as local production goes down and imports go up, so tax collections will go down. Conversely, as local production increases and imports decrease, so the tax base will improve. However, once we make the change, the government income would stabilise and only uh, and will change with the spending power available. <coughs> Current tax systems. There are arguments going on in the UK and Europe and now here about the avoidance of company tax by international companies and the existence of tax havens. Can these countries insist that all countries of the world have the same tax systems and comply? And the answer to that is no. So we do away with these taxes and join the tax havens. Brexit, an ideal opportunity to change tax systems and to improve the economy. Instead of doom and gloom, this system can improve the standard of living of the average person and improve the whole economy with 20 to 30 percent saving in government expenses and in the NHS and other services as well as business. There are even more benefits. In the interest of keeping the cost of employment down and spreading the cost with the extra taxes on imports, we have free health services, free education, free basic pensions, low inflation because there is no income on wages, wage increments and increments cost less. Low interest rates to keep business going and keep down the cost of rents or mortgages. A full employment policy which would reduce the cost of government and the rate of taxation. Robots can pay tax. Income tax must go. Company tax must go. Various other taxes should go. There is a need for business to recognize their marketplace, which is the community, and both business and government must recognize the need for full employment and a reasonable wage structure. All people must work to contribute. An appreciation of what can be done for local companies to compete in the marketplace and a need for self-sufficiency self-sufficiency where possible. A tax haven, that's what we've created. Investors will invest in tax havens. Many countries have lost investment capital through taxation systems. We have now created our own tax haven. Whole factories have been moved from Europe and America to China and Asia to take advantage of cheap labor and generally creating unemployment and increasing the need for more tax to pay unemployment benefits in their own countries. An American economist estimated that America will lose 40 million jobs to China in the next 10 years. Trump expressed concern over jobs to Mexico and China. Britain and America have allowed immigrants to work because they are cheaper. Financial, uh, there is an addition to that. Because the immigrants do not spend all their money, they will very often remit money overseas. So they are not as beneficial as normal residents. Financial institutions in England now use places like India for their offices because they are cheaper. Supermarkets. Retailers should have a special interest in the promotion of local products. They have to know that their sales depend on the incomes of the local population and that comes from the sale of local products. Appreciate how the economy works. 
We increase the minimum wage, and this will increase the demand for goods from the retailers, and in turn, that will increase the demand for goods from the factories and business sector overall. The increase in sales will produce more taxes for the fiscus and more turnover for the business sector. It starts with putting more people into work and improving their standard of living. With just VAT as a tax, <coughs> it becomes relatively easy to improve tax receipts. We can increase the rate of VAT for short period or short term results. Increase the minimum wages for longer term results. This will result in an increase in inflation or decrease in value of the currency at some stage in the future. It is bound to happen. The choices are relatively few and the consequences are known. My estimate of the rate of VAT is 20 to 25 percent. It is time for change. Thank you, one and all. Well done. Well, let's hope that it's... Ha, ha, ha.